Hi, and welcome back to the channel. And today what I would like to do is take you through a bank-owned property. So when you think bank-owned properties, the first thing you're probably going to think is a little bit rough or something that really needs some help and needs some support. And how are you going to be able to do that? Um, I was going to do today's video um, as kind of a, a video version, if you will, of the property itself. But to be honest with you, it was a little bit too rough and I had to end up just shooting some pictures so that I could get in and into the property and then get out kind of as quickly as possible. So today what I want to do is just take you through a couple steps that I had when approaching the property, sharing with you some pictures um, that I have of the property and pointing out some items that you may be looking at when you see a property. So the first thing that I want to share with you is really going to be the outside or the appearance of the property itself. So as we go through this image of the outside, I want you to start thinking about what are the things that you see, what are the things that, and kind of compare those to the things that I see or the things that I point out. So the picture that you see here is the picture that you see or the home that you see when driving up from the curb itself. Um, and so tell me or just at least take a few seconds to look at this image and identify things that you see, items that could be areas of concern for you. So for me, when I see this property, um, I initially see trees that are um, overgrown. I see weeds that are growing. I see things that appear from the road to be major concerns for you. But really, these are cosmetic items, items that you can really take care of, one, with a little bit of labor, and two, not with a lot of kind of funds or money to kind of make that happen. So a couple thousand dollars is probably going to address the issues that you see here from the outside. So start to, to kind of understand what is cosmetic from the outside. You know, you've got trees, you've got shrubs, you've got um, grass that's kind of growing around that can easily be cut. That's the type of thing that I see. Now, the second thing that I'm going to look for as I approach the house really is kind of my first indicator to the home itself is going to be what does this place look like once I walk through the door? And so the image that you see now is going to be really the first thing that you see as you step through the door. And the second image that you're going to see is the initial living room. And so take a moment, look at these images and what is it that you recognize? What is it that you feel uh, could be areas of concern for you? So the first bit of advice that I would give here is as you approach the property, um, understand that things that are outside, things that could be overgrown, really can be cosmetic and can kind of be fixed quickly. But when you look at what's inside the property, those are going to be the things that really show um, how, well, how well maintained the property was and if there are major areas or uh, items of concern here. So the first thing that I notice here is the wall itself is really out of control and it looks as though it's been wet at some point in time and you can see that it's bowed. The second image that you see, the major issue or concern here for me is going to be the separation of the floor itself from the wall. That is a major issue, major concern for me. It tells me that the floor joists have somehow settled in this house or that the foundation itself has moved causing the, the spacing that you see between the wall. And, and the last image that I want to share with you here is probably one of the most disturbing images that I've ever seen um, from inside of a home and something that should really be a red flag for you. I'm using this image as kind of an exaggeration, if you will, because this should be a, a, a sign for how this property really has kind of failed to live up to the integrity of the building itself and something that you should definitely walk away from. So you see here, there's a separation from the floor and the actual wall itself. This is telling me again that we have major issues with the, with the property, which also means that I have an investment, a large investment that I need to make into this property in order to get it to where it's actually livable and I can start doing some real work inside of this property. So I think this is a great example of, of a property that you know is a bank owned property it's something that you're kind of taking a chance on, just getting out and to look at. You expect it to be rough, but upon further 
kind of review of this property, you realize that this really is too rough to kind of take on. If this was a property that I was going to invest in, I would really have to work with the bank to help them understand that this is a property that you push over and you start from new. There's too much rework that needs to be done here and not something that you want to tackle as part of the project. So again, thanks for joining today. I hope you enjoyed. Really gives you some insight into what to look for when going to a bank property and kind of the extreme for what a home or what a property can look like when you're visiting. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below, and we'll see you next week. Thank you.